Hi everyone, it's Georgina here. Um, I'm speaking to you from my mum's garden in Sheffield, um, which I've been lucky enough to call home for it again for a few months um, over lockdown. Well, what a year it's been for, for all of us, even COVID put to one side. I know it's not been without its challenges for any of us. Um, and yet, despite this, I think um, the ELP's been really finding its feet over the last 12 months um, and earning its place in the landscape restoration field. We're now at a point where we can really start to share the stories and the lessons from our uh, from our portfolio of projects and for that I just really like to say thank you um, to all of our grantees for the inspiring and insightful news stories that they've shared with us um, that we're then able to share with our wider wider ELP community. I think the biggest communications achievement we've had this year is actually being able to share those stories, whether that's through social media or our first ELP annual review, which has had really positive feedback, um, or even through our new website, which we've redesigned in a way that puts all of our projects and their work front and centre and really makes it the central focus of the ELP story. I think with the looming threats of biodiversity loss and climate change it's more important than ever that we're able to share inspiring stories of, of recovery um, to give people the motivation to make changes in their own lives and inspire wider systems change um, and frankly give us all that much needed dose of, of optimism but it's just as important that we're able to back up these stories with evidence and science that decision makers can really trust um, and so with that, I'll hand over to Nancy, who will give us a short update um, on how the science side of the ELP is progressing. Thanks, Georgina. As Georgina says, I think one of the really special and important things about the ELP projects are the fact that they're founded on a really strong scientific basis, and also that you're all collecting data to understand the impacts of your restoration actions. So one of the highlights for the past six months for me has been receiving all your baseline indicator reports. I've received nearly 80 different individual indicator reports from across the project and have been really blown away by the amount of data you've collected, the wealth of detail in there, and the diversity of both indicators and the different approaches that have been used. I can't really do justice to all this information in a minute, um, but I just thought I'd put up a slide to show the range of indicator data that's been collected, um, running from ecological data covering things like hydrology and animal and plant species abundance, through ecosystem service indicators describing regulating and provisioning services, social indicators covering local attitudes and institutional processes, and economic indicators describing the number of nature-based jobs and businesses. I think this data you've collected following really carefully described protocols puts the ELP and the projects themselves in a really uniquely strong position, both to understand the impacts of the actions you're taking and to demonstrate these impacts to other people as well. So, well done.